Warning, the following video has flashing lights and also includes content that may be deemed inappropriate for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Barbara Hartman, yes, once again you have found your way into the Fox Den for this episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. This is the home and the stomping ground of the Midnight Society, yet please allow me to feed Thank you for releasing my shackles, Barb. Now that my power source is fully revamped and recharged, I am no longer shackled. It is time to stalk the dog man. Yes, and just remember, massacres make the dream work or something. <laughs> When I looked into the eyes of this dog man, there was nothing. This thing was an apex predator. My creatures of the night, yes, welcome back once again to another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio, the home and meeting ground of the Midnight Society. And of course, we have Barb Hartman hanging out with us once again, even though she is so busy, she always allots time to hang out with us. Barb, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty busy, but good. And just saw you finished up with your podcast tonight, which yep. is excellent. And yeah, yeah, just been trying to just get set up for the night. And like I told you, ironically, I don't know what happened. I was early for stuff. So. <laughs> oh, that ha- you know, that stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, everyone's in a blue moon, right? So what have you been up to? Just, um, yeah, just. Yeah, you know, same, um, you know, the typical stuff going on and, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Working my my um, research and dealing with my Sasquatch clan and the terrible, like, situations, you know, going on in, in the South and with this hurricane. Oh, my gosh, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, that's some crazy stuff down there for sure, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. to my audience, yeah. definitely that's why a few of my hosts on um, Fortunately, I've been to MIA, like Harley's got a ton of stuff going on. And yes. yeah, this other gentleman told me when he gave me a call, he, half of his trailer was ripped in half and not oh, stuff for sure. So it's yeah. unfortunate, but it's just the way the world's going. Yeah, I mean, to each their own, yeah. but I mean, that's a clear yeah. sign of massive climate change, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh. So, unfortunate stuff but what else have you been up to yeah well um i have i'm glad that i got to talk to this guy and i was telling you you know a little bit before we started the show um this is um somebody that um uh sent me a message through facebook and um he wants to uh remain you know as many do completely anonymous because um in his message. And I'm like, Oh, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'd love to have him on my podcast. So, um, I asked him and he's like, no, no, I absolutely can't. I have to keep my identity. He said, I don't mean to be shady. I'm not trying to be a creep, but he said, I have to keep my identity completely, um, you know, completely anonymous. Um, he, he is from the, I'll say the Pacific Northwest. Um, so, you know, my like neck of the woods. Um, and, um, I, anyway, so, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go right into it. Um, he would not, I told you, wouldn't, he didn't want me to record anything, which, you know, of course above the board. So I basically, I'm going off of, I was able to talk to him this morning, so I'm just going to be going off of my notes and my memory. So, um, 
you know, let's all uh, just get right into it. Now, this is about this is about um, a dog man. All right. I can tell you that they're involved in farming and in different facets. This this um, guy, um, different facets of 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 um, cattle and, you know, cow. So, you know, I mean, so it's meat and, and dairy. OK. And um, and it's a family, you know, a lot of the family members are involved in working it. Um, this happened about six years ago. And, um, and it was in the summer, six, about, yeah, like I said, about six years ago. Um, so how it all, how it first started was, um, there's a man who's his father that, um, he's at work at a construction site because, um, at that time, many of them had to keep, uh, separate jobs, you know, as farmers, like additional jobs to keep their operations going. So his dad's at his construction um, job for the day and he gets a call from his wife, this guy's mom. And um, she's saying that, that there, what appears to her, their entire herd of cows and a few even um, like calves, they're all in this, like uh, they're gathered in this very tight group near the one, the, the end of the fence and, um, and their dogs, they have a little pack of like cow dogs had been kind of alerting her that something's going wrong. Um, and, um, she also got a notification that there is an issue with the, uh, with the electric fence, you know, that there was a, a trip or, you know, whatever. So, um, the cows are you know, obviously at risk of escaping. So, um, he rushes home. And he can see um, from his driveway that the herd is kind of off in the distance and that they are bunched, you know, together. Now, they do, they have had a problem in that area with coyotes. All right. So as he gets out of the car, you know, his wife begins to kind of like frantically say that, um, like, this is what's happened to me all day. And she said she had been hearing weird, like, howls and, like, barking, um, like, blood-curdling screams. Um, but it was unlike anything that they've heard before. Uh, they are not supposed to have wolves in that area. And, um, but again, pro problems with coyotes. Um, and um, there are known to be cougars, but she's heard, they've heard them before. And she said, this is not, you know, it's not a cougar. Um, she had also heard uh, like a, like a thud on like in the house, you know, and, and uh, like this big thud against the house. And at the same time, this is when the dog, like their dogs are like, kind of like at the door and they're barking and, and, and screaming and freaking out. So she grabs her shotgun and she goes out to see what, you know, what's going on, asking the dogs, what's up. They're just completely like to her, you know, like kind of bunching around her and, and, um, cause they're completely freaked out. So she goes out and, and looks um, or, or is like looking around and she sees this big, huge like scrape that looked like a claw mark down the side of their house, like wood siding and, and deep. So, you know, that's when she um, starts to really, you know, she I got to call my husband. Um, so she gives him a call and I guess she must have discovered with the fence. I'm not sure, you know, the exact details, but she had, had got a notification about the fence. He's like, okay, let's go out and see what's going on with the herd. You know, um, they try to get the dogs to come with them. The dogs would absolutely not. And he said my, that the dogs are normally very um, obedient. You know, um, they just do whatever they're supposed to. But no, the dogs were kind of just hanging back on the porch. So he took the kind of like the pack uh, leader dog, you know, he took that one and he puts it in the truck. Um, the dog immediately is cowers and hides under the bench seat. And, and at the same time, his wife's opening the door while the dog, you know, flies out of the out of the door and, and goes back on the porch. Then the dogs started to uh, run like toward the barn. So they're like, whatever, the dogs aren't going to cooperate with us, whatever's going on. So um, he and his wife ride out to where the, the cows are. And he said they're literally like they were so frightened. They're like jumping on over each other trying to you know get away from whatever and they're you know all this and and um they could see that the, that they had the calves this is really interesting you may know this the cows were like right in the middle um of all this but he said it appeared you know that the calves were just kind of safe i mean what but they knew that they had to you know do something about this he's like okay let me call my neighbor and see what we can do because it's they're thinking it's probably like at this point they're thinking it's probably coyote 
you know, um, and, uh, what, oh yeah. One thing I did, I did want to mention is that, um, as this is happening, as they're watching, they're, you know, checking out what the cows are doing. They hear this, uh, blood curdling again, scream, howl, um, coming from the woods, like just beyond where the, where the cows, you know, are, there's like, there's, he said, there's, um, at that point of the property, there's, uh, woods right next to where the, where this fence is. Okay. So, um, when that happened though, the good thing was that this freaks the cows out. They start to almost like go in a stampede kind of back to where the barn was. So they're like, okay, that's good. Right. You know, and the little calves follow and they're running to the barn. Um, so they're like, all right, let's, let's get the neighbor and come back out and see what's going on. You know, the guy said that, um, he, after they heard the, this howl and the scream, it was like, okay, that he didn't think it was a cougar because he's heard cougars, you know, many times didn't think he did. He did describe it though. as like an old woman that, um, was maybe like a heavy smoker that was trying to scream. And it was coming out of like a howl, like, uh, like a, like a gargling almost. Um, and so again, they'd never heard anything like this. So terrified, but so, um, he, they drive, you know, go back to, toward the, I guess the barn and, um, he drops his wife off. She's going to kind of just herd the, you know, the cows in and, um, they're all running into this big, like arena. He said, that's in the middle of the barn. And so, um, and they had, I think that he, or she, somebody had, had texted the sons who live there, but they were at work. Um, they're on their way home cause it's starting to get dark anyway. So, um, so the sons get home and they're like, okay, you know, and, what we're, we're going to, um, the guy and his neighbor are going to go out and see if they can find anything. So, um, the neighbor arrives, um, they drive out. And in the meantime, the, these two, this couple also has two adult sons that live in the area. And, um, he said, Hey, you know, get in contact with them, please. And have them come out in case we need any help. Cause they're thinking at this point, they have themselves convinced this is probably a pack of coyotes. Um, because again, they don't think that it's they're they're really not thinking that this is this is a cougar um they're almost certain so the neighbor um arrives uh he and the and the man drive out to the area and 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 like i said it's it's starting to get dark it's starting to get real really dark at this point the guy had had um grabbed a uh, like a spotlight um and and put it in the in the truck with them so they drive back out uh, again here this that like kind of blood curdling, you know, scream coming out of the woods. Um, the neighbors like, yeah, I think that's probably coyotes. They, the man had like a, uh, a coyote lure type of a device. I don't know if you ever heard of anything like that. I hadn't, but he said, um, that they use it to, uh, it makes all kinds of noises, you know, like injured rabbit and whatnot. And they use that to kind of, when they're trying to get the coyotes to lure them out so they can, you know, exterminate them. So, cause they can, he said they could, they're very, very devastating to, you know, especially to calves. They do that. And, um, when they do that, um, this is weird. All of a sudden they hear this crashing through the woods and out comes like 15, he said to 20 deer are just come at, running out of the woods and like just run kind of like by and and one was going you know one way and they're they're just trying to get out of the woods and they're like what the heck um so um then um they hear another crashing and he said this time it's big he said it was like uh, like an elephant or something crashing through the woods and the guy's like oh wait i'm going to get on my sp-. because all of a sudden the, the um the sound stopped so the man gets out a spotlight and he's kind of shining it on the wo- in the woods. And then all of a sudden, this large animal emerges from the woods. And it has it's and it's on all fours. And it has its head down and its teeth are bared. And it's like he said, it was like growling, like like you imagine like a demon. And um, they both raise their weapons and the animal just stopped and is just like kind of crouched there looking at them. Then. The creature stands up on its hind legs, and as it's doing so, they hear um, these sounds. They said like a bunch of people, maybe like cracking their knuckles or something. Um, you know, we hear reports of that, right? But just the so much cracking and like bones breaking. They said now, 
This the guy described. He said that he thought the creature was about seven to eight feet tall. Um, it had very um, like amber eyes when they're shown. You know, when when the lights are hitting it, the lights uh, the eyes were very vibrant amber. Um, he said it was black and gray, and it had very very patchy fur, almost like it looked like something he thought possibly like with mange, but he, but, but he didn't, but he, he, you know, didn't, didn't know. Um, the head closest that he could think of, it was like, like a German shepherd kind of a head, but, but it was different. Um, he said that, that this, this thing just stood there like snarling at them. He could see that had legs of a dog. He didn't, couldn't see a tail, um, didn't think it had a tail, but wasn't, you know, wasn't sure. Um, and he didn't really remember as far as like if it had paws or hands, he, he, it was too, just he and he and, you know, the neighbor, they're just completely frozen in fear. And the neighbor said to him, like, like says to him, I don't think our weapons are big enough, like to take this thing down. And and he's like, well, what do you think it is? And he's like, I don't know, but I, I'm just, I'm worried about that. So the thing's just standing there, like, like snarling at them. And so they back up, get in the truck and go back to the house. They're thinking that they're going to um, go back out, you know, uh, get bigger weapons and go back out to try to find this thing. So um, they got went back to the house and the thing he said that it was just literally Kenny just like he said standing there like at the edge of the woods like not doing anything just standing there snarling at them so they get in the truck all right so go back to the house grab their bigger bigger caliber uh, weapons go back to the same spot and obviously the thing was you know at this point it's gone so um they go back to the house. Uh, his older sons now at this point are there. And so they're all going to, they're, they're thinking what they're going to do is they're going to um, go back in the daylight and try to find this. Uh, I think that he said they, maybe the next day was a week, you know, was like weekend, like a, uh, so they thought, okay, we have two solid days here that we can devote to finding this thing. So that's what they did. Um, uh, they have little um, like, Utility vehicles that are all terrain. Um, he said everybody in that area that has farms kind of has them. So he and um, and he uh, and his neighbor went in one, and I think there was like maybe you know some some more friends in it, and then his two sons, his two adult sons, went in another, and they were kind of just um, going to split it up and um, and um, you know go through the woods to try to fl like flesh this flesh this thing out um try to cover all their you know all their base all the bases that they could and to, again to try to get um, track this thing down and here's where who okay so this is where it goes from the uh this man to his son is now telling me the story because really his son is the one that has told me all of this story um so now this the next part is you know uh, so hit this guy and his brother again the son of the of the original man and his brother they're out there they have um the little all-terrain vehicles um he called it a mule that's right because i was like wait you're getting and i said i i'm sorry you mean you're getting on mules and he said no 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 that's what it's called a mule this little all-terrain vehicle um so they're in a mule. He said it has a light bar on top um, that you that they thought, well, they could use that, you know, if they needed to, if it gets into, you know, into the dark. But um, they had quite a few days of quite a few hours of daylight because they started out pretty early. So they're going along um, a few hours later. Uh, they heard again that how, you know, kind of a scream thing. So. Um, message or called the dad or whatever, you know, did you hear that? And and he said, yeah, he said, I'm going to do the coyote um, caller because that's what we used in the past. I mean, that, that's what we used last night, right. Um, to get it to come out. So the guy starts um, doing the coyote calls um, on his little, you know, little piece of equipment. And um, they, they're just, he, him and his brother are kind of just sitting there and waiting to see what's going to happen. And he said his brother like kind of like nudged him and and points over and there like to the I feel like it was like to the left is standing this animal. And this time it's not it's 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 already there. It's um, already uh, like standing up. OK, it's not on it's not on all fours. 
um, standing up. He said it had its, uh, there was a tree there in the middle of the woods, but it wasn't, he said it's not a dense, densely like uh, tight, you know, wooded area. Um, there is room to, that they could ride, like I said, that little thing, you know, around through the woods. So this thing is standing there and he has its, his, uh, I believe he said his left, like almost arm is around like hugging the tree and just, and looking at them. And they're like, what in the world? He said it had very human hands with but long, long fingers and long claws. And, um, he described the thing as, um, very similar to what his dad said, but he said very, very vibrant, bright yellow eyes. Um, uh, bla- let's see, black with patches of gray. But um, he didn't think that that it was patchy, as in that it was not it, the hair. Its fur was not uh, was not like a dogs that you know that you can't see any skin through it this was different he said he could you could definitely see the skin and it had he thought it had like pale skin and that is what was making it maybe appear to his dad that it had mange or something like that you know he said you I could we could definitely see that the, the fur I mean I mean the skin you know through this through this like fur so um they're like what should we do grab their weapons and um and they're just standing there staring at each other. And he said, all of a sudden the thing like drops to, to all fours and starts like slinking towards them, you know, like it's a predator and it's gonna. And so his brother kind of like screamed, like, you know, like, what should we do? And at this point, the thing gets back up on, on, um, on its leg, on its two legs and they, he said, we heard this cracking and like, you know, all this, but, but it was very fast. And the thing starts like walking toward them and growling and snarling. So the brother uh, discharges, you know, his weapon and shoots the thing. And he said, like, you could see that, that, that it was like a flesh and, you know, it's a flesh and blood. Um, it's kind of, it's like chest. There was a part of the chest, like was, he said, like, was kind of like, not blown away, but you could see that's where the injury was. There's blood flying. There's like, you know, muscle, whatever is flying. And the thing kind of like stood like, and, and like kind of clutched and, and, you know, like screamed and clutched its chest, but still was standing there, but it kind of turned around as if it was going to maybe go back you know, into the woods or whatever. And so his, he's like, shoot it, you know, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. So, well, the brother's gun jams. And so it's like, okay, let's just get out of here. The brother's like, get out. Like, let's just leave. You know, it's probably this thing is, it's going to take it down. What we just did. As he said, it was like, you could see a big hole in like in its chest. Right. So they just, he starts up his, his, uh, you know, the mule thing and, and they take off and they're like freaking out, you know, what's going on. All of a sudden he, as he's talking to his brother, he looks toward his brother and, and here is this thing it's running. It's, um, and he said it was, it was running as fast as the mules going, which was, he had it about fifth, like as when he could, it's like 50 miles an hour, not always 50 miles, you know, but he said, that's, that's what it maxed. And he goes, and I feel like I had it. I was flooring. It was absolutely floored. I'm going as fast as I can. And, and this thing caught up to them and it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like looking at them and he's like, and they're like, oh my God, they're freaking out. So his brother's trying to get his, the gun, uh, like, jam, you know, unjammed or whatever. And, and he's, and, and they're screaming, he's like, like, can, you know, just scream and scream and scream. And he said, the thing is, as it's running and it's going, it's, it's like looking at them. And he said, Kenny, it like smiled kind of like at them, like a, like a sneer, you know, like, ha Um, and he said this thing, its eyes were so human. It, it just, they were just very, very, you know, again, freaking out, freaking out. Um, so then finally he, I think that his brother like grabbed his gun. Cause he's like, get my, my gun. His brother gets the guy's gun and he shoots at the animal and misses. But this was enough that the animal like uh, kind of just veered away from them and ran like away from, um, but it still kept running. And then they kind of lost sight. They just wanted to get like back home. So their parents' house was 
the closest. So um, they go to the parents' house, which for the original couple, right? They just like shut the, you know, shut the thing off the driveway, go get in the house. And the, um, because they had been gone, I think for a while, the dad and the neighbor and another friend, they show up like almost at the same time. Oh, I know. Cause they had heard the gunshots. That's why. Yeah. I was trying to think why he said, yeah, but, um, and they had been trying to call these, these two boys, you know, and they're not getting an answer. So they're like, okay, look, all right. So everybody's in the house at the same time. And they're wondering if like, is this thing gonna, you know, is it going to show up? They're like, Oh my God. And they're telling each other, you know, they're telling every, telling the story. And, um, and this guy said, he thought that, um, this thing looked, he said, it looked like a werewolf to me. Like if he said, if you'd seen the Van Helsing movies, that's what this thing looked like to me, because he said it was going easily from like quadruped, you know, like bounding, running like just like a human would, but then it'd go back down and um, just to kind of gain speed, he thought. Um, That, though, was it. That was it. They've never, they had never seen it again. um, They waited, they were like, should we, what should we do? Should we call the police? You know, what should we do? So they thought, all right, um, you know, maybe we should just let this, I don't know. We, I don't know. You know what? I mean, maybe we should just let it go. We're going to sound crazy, but, um, talking to each other and all decided, okay, let's just all kind of, you know, chill out and sleep on this and whatever. So then now here's where it goes back to the, um, the couple, the, the original couple. Okay. Um, they're talking. And a few days later, his wife's like, I really think that we need to let the police know because if this thing comes back, Um, or if there's like a pack of them, you know, the police need to be aware. And he's like, you know, this description, they're going to think we're crazy. What there's a werewolf running around because supposedly there's not wolves in that area. And he said, and this didn't even, it looked like a wolf, but it didn't more. I mean, it looked like a werewolf. It wasn't like a regular wolf. Um, and, and what are we going to say? But she said, okay, let's just, you know, let's involve the police. Don't go into this big description, just say that this is what happened with our, you know, with the cows, how they were afraid, how you witnessed the, the, all the deer running out and, you know, just, so he's like, all right, so call the police and, um, and somebody had come out to talk to them. That was, um, that he, he was like, oh, wait, I know you from high school. The, the, um, this guy was much younger, you know, than the, than the dad, than this man, but all right. So He's telling them, he's telling the guy what happened and, and, um, I'm sorry, he's telling the cop what happened and the cop's like, oh, interesting. And and he, and so he said, we don't know if it was a a big coyote or if it's a, or is it a, you know, maybe a wolf. And, um, then the guy starts to, the, the cop, I'm sorry, the police officer starts to ask him questions like along the line of you know, when you say this thing didn't look like a wolf, what do you mean? And so then he said to the police officer, finally, he said, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I think this thing looked like a werewolf. And the police officer said, okay. He said, that's what I was waiting because he said, we have had reports for the last several months that people have been talking about this, right? So he said, I know what I'm going to do is we will handle this. He said, please just be very careful. Don't go out after dark. Um, always have, you know, a loaded weapon, um, secure your animals. Don't let them out to, you know, to just graze like you normally do. Keep them in the barn. Um, you know, just protect everybody. I'm going to have a team come out. And, um, he said, I'll get back to you when I, all right. So two days later, the guy, the cop calls again and said, Hey, I have a team of, of, um, of guys that are going to help, help, out with us. So he said, but they have some questions for you. So, um, they show up and it's a, um, this black solid black utility vehicle with like windows blocked out, um, and blacked out. And, um, so the, the same original cop comes and he has, uh, one of the, this guy with him who is dressed, um, like he said, like kind of like in, in, like SWAT or, you know, this like very tactical gear. The guy had, um, he had this weapon in his, um, in a holster that was, you know, on his 
like on his side, on his thigh, at his side, and he said it looked like a like a semi, like a, like an automatic, not a semi, like an automatic weapon. Um, but this little teeny thing, and he was like, "Oh, that's like he's the guy was thinking that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool weapon." So they start asking questions, and his wife was like, "Listen, just please, just tell them the truth, you know." So they said everything that happened. They said everything that happened with them, what they saw, and as well as what their sons, you know, saw, um, and that they had shot at it. And so um, they said, "Okay, so." as they, I go, I guess they go back out to say goodbye because they must have come in, into the house. And I think I, I'm sorry, I think I didn't tell you that, but they're walk, they walked out as they as they walk back out, they see that there's um, about five men that are with the guy in the, um, in the blacked out, you know, the in blacked out van and they're all dressed the same. He said there was no um, identifying, uh, you know, uh, badges or, or, symbol symbols or anything that he could tell where this, you know, where these gentlemen were from. Um, but all had that same kind of weapon, um, on their hip. And so they said, okay, you know, same thing, just be careful. Just, uh, we'll get back to you, you know, as soon as we know something, but in the meantime, just continue to have, you know, take all precautions. So, they didn't hear anything for, he said it was several weeks. And um, the police officer then came to the house one night and said, um, okay, we, we still want you to be um, very careful. But he said, I think it's very, it's safe. We, we think it's safe now for you to allow your animals back out, you know, um, to graze and, and, but just please keep an eye on, you know, and um, if you, if you see anything, he said, he gave him his like, personal number and he said just please call me if anything happens uh you know if you have any issues um and so that was that and and they never heard or saw of the thing again i think the the cop had said i can't you know i can't divulge like i can't give you any more information other than you know that uh, it's we feel it's safe at this point so um so that was that and then that's it that's the end of the story and they haven't had any issues um so I think that the what the guy when he's when he contacted me he was basically like I know people talk about dog man but you know have you heard like about werewolves and I'm like well I've heard of both so you know they're really trying to they would really like to kind of figure out what this thing is and I'm I, I said well I said I can um, I ha- I am in touch with the um, with the North American Dog Men project with people in that and I said so I'll run it by them but I said um we, I may not be able to have really a straight answer for you either so but um so that's that what do you think you said some straight up gnarly stuff and nightmare fuel <laughs> yeah, and exactly for sharing that right there. yeah yeah and that has some things that kind of ring a bell with a lot of similarities and. Have you heard the February 2nd, 2018 Kingston, New York case that the North American Dogman Project covered? No. No? No. Uh, you want me to, let me try to yeah. summarize this real quick. So okay, you have yeah, yeah, yeah. Local resident, 30-year-old Brandon Close, is about to finish up working at night and head back to his remote 192-acre farmstead. When his phone rings, seeing that it's his wife, he begins to get worried since she is alone with their newborn <gasps> daughter. And mm. if something does happen, their closest neighbor is 25 minutes away. Answering mm. the phone, his wife begins to tell him that all their cows are acting really strange and have grouped themselves up to the 20 by 20 fenced in pasture. His wife continues oh. to say that their pet dog, Maya, refuses to go outside their dog to use the bathroom and that she had to drag her outside. Telling his wife he is on his way home, Brandon hops into his truck and begins heading home as fast as possible. As he arrives, the light of day is fading, but there is still enough visibility for him to head down and check on the cows without a flashlight. Coming up to the pasture, he sees all 12 of his cows jumping up on top Mm. of each other, trying to Mm. escape. As they have been pressing against the electric fence for so long that the breaker had short-circuited. Thinking it must be a large pack of coyotes that has spooked the cows... Brandon calls his neighbor, Gene, to see if he'll come over and try to scare off the coyotes so the cows don't escape. Agreeing to help, Gene said he'd be on his way over soon. Very quickly, Brandon hangs up the phone and begins starting walking towards his house when he hears a loud human-like scream mixed in with the sound of a wolf howl. Now beginning to run back to his house, Brandon's wife informs him 
that some sort of strange wolf-like creature has been howling, screaming, and looking in the house around their property for the past 35 minutes or so before he had gotten home. The creature was tapping and clawing at the window before seemingly oh. dragging its claws repeatedly around the house. Now feeling uneasy, Brandon grabs his shotgun and the keys to his trail master 4x4, quietly and cautiously steps outside. And to their horror, they see five deep claw marks all around the outside of their home. As the pair is feeling extremely uneasy, they hear the same loud howl Brandon had, had just heard down by the cow pen. Looking at his wife, she just stares back blankly. Quickly, he tells her to go inside and that he and Jean are going to figure this out. Jean arrives and Brandon fills him in on what has been going on. And the pair proceed to head down a small trail at the edge of their property and into the darkness of the night on their small little four by four. The trail is surrounded by dense forest that is only pushed back by four or five feet from the trail. As the two are driving about two miles down the trail, suddenly a large group of deer begin dashing towards them in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Coming so close to the four by four buggy that the men could have reached out and touched them. Whoa. Looking at Brandon, Gene tells his friend that something large must be stirring the cows and also the wildlife. Continuing to drive down the trail, the men began to hear something large crashing through the trees behind them. Slowing down the buggy, the sound of the crashing brush has also stopped. Now the buggy is turned off and is absolute silence. Suddenly the pair begin to hear the sound of large canine-like breathing, it seems, just outside of the illumination of the headlights. Gene grabs his Remington 875 pump shotgun and begins loading his high brass shells. And Brandon picks up his million candle spotlight and shines it in the direction of their breathing. To the men's disbelief, they see an enormous wolf-like creature peeking out from behind a tree with amber yellow eyes. Suddenly, they hear two loud popping sounds and the creature pushes itself up on its hind legs and begins walking out of the forest towards the men. Brandon said the creature was easily eight feet tall, dark black, had enormous human-like arms with hands attached to what looked to be large black nails, enormous pectoral muscles, muscular canine-like legs, and looked like a werewolf from the movie Van Helsing. Oh, Gene... my God, Kenny! Whoa! You're right? No, you're good. Gene begins to yell out, oh, my effing God. Oh, yeah. Is that a werewolf? Unable to answer out of sheer trauma, Brandon just stands there. Gene fires off three shots, one hitting the animal directly in the chest, tearing the muscle clear off and spewing blood everywhere. Oh, my God. Quickly leaping to avoid the next incoming rounds, the creature screamed out in pain and rage before jumping 20 feet up an enormous tree and then leaping at least 30 feet in the other direction and wow. off into the darkness. Starting up the 4x4 buggy, Brandon begins speeding at max speed of around 45 miles per hour in the direction of his property. Gene starts yelling out, damn, man, my gun is jammed. It's effing jammed, man. Suddenly, the illumination oh. of the headlights, the men see the creature inches away from the driver's side door, peering in at the men, grinning as if to say, now it's oh my, my turn gosh. to F you up. The creature was running beside them on two legs before throwing its entire body weight into the driver's side door of the buggy oh. and beginning to try and slow down the 4 by 4 as if holding it. They could hear the engine whining as it was losing traction as this animal was pushing it off the trail. Finally getting his shotgun unjammed, Gene raises the gun and points it at the creature. No sooner has he done this, the creature retreated and ran off into the darkness, but they could hear it dashing somewhere nearby. As Brandon and Gene were about to burst out of the trail and back onto the farm, the creature tries to flank them but misses its leap towards the 4x4 four by, four by inches and bombing off and rolling into the field. Gene fired a few more shots towards the animal before it seemingly gave up the pursuit, letting out numerous rage-filled howls. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that's – there's so some – so many similarities that's right? freaky Th and then the others but this is the other side of, of the, the country. country so wow right that's why i figured mm -hmm. you might want to hear it because there's some yes. similarities but also a lot of differences well yeah but so but so yeah so wow. much like so kind of because the farmland still and yeah mm -hmm. same reactions yeah. from and the then the thing with the, the, the 
the the the cows yeah climbing over each other or whatever because he yeah, that's and whoa. always hear about the claw marks mm. tapping on the windows and stuff yeah and yeah oh wow yeah so it's that was covered by yeah jody and such and then william yeah. and myself had uh, dove into that a little bit as well and so that was yeah. in 2018 did you say yes 20? In okay in, in kingston in, okay. new york so kingston, new york okay like oh, you had boy. said too, that it's opposite sides of the country, but similar mm-hmm. territory and such. Yeah. So pretty yeah. messed up stuff, eh? And bizarre about how the deer were running out, like you know, of the yeah, of the see, forest. And I've heard that in other cases as Have well. Have you? Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wow. Where people are Whoa. just like you know walking down a trail or something, and all of a sudden yeah. these deer are just bolting by them. And yeah. They're just Whoa. kind of like, well, what the heck? Should I yeah, be that's going not... in the other direction? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's not what deer do typically. I mean, you know, they're just, they'll see you and try to, you know what I yes. mean, try to elude humans like, whoa, or or they'll just stand there, but but wow. You know, I'm such a nerd and geek here, so all <sighs> I can think about in that is the original scene in Jurassic Park when Dr. Grant and the kids are walking <laughs> in the direction of all those dinosaurs running in the opposite yes. direction, <laughs> and then the T-Rex comes out. Yeah, and end up yes. behind the log as it just Whoa. sits there and destroys that thing. Yeah, yeah so I can yeah. just kind of picture. Oh, wow. I mean, obviously that's oh. a movie, but it did a pretty good right. picture, and probably that's as right. These people are seeing though as this thing mm-hmm. is going by them, and yeah, no, that's some straight up messed up stuff right there for sure. The similarities, and I've heard of you know people in the middle of the woods, and I think. I don't know if it was directly Jessica. I know it was her team, though, that had been out in the woods before. And a group of unmarked people all decked out just asked, you know, actually, they didn't say anything. Yeah, Jessica's group asked them, like, what they were doing. And they just said the same thing you are. But here also is the thing in the case you covered, it seems like it had they were either like a private contractor or something and definitely had something to do with like the deputies. But in a lot of cases, though, I know there's little sectors of groups that I'm not going to name them because uh, it will give them clout, well, yeah. but mm-hmm. they go out and think that they're special little groups like that. And they'll deck themselves all out in black mm-hmm. like that and special mm-hmm. gear, but they're kind of like LARPers, if that makes sense oh, to you. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So it makes me wonder if some of the times when people are seeing these supposed decked out groups that they may have nothing to do with military, it just yeah. might be people that are former law enforcement and think that mm. they yeah. want to still be like special for, I'm just saying that because mm. if anyone knows the reference I'm making, they'll definitely pick it up. But I mean, there are people that think that they're these type of groups like that. So it just makes me wonder, I do believe they are having groups like you said, but then I also believe it's just other people that are, I don't know, like former law enforcement and such mm-hmm. that basically have their own little clans that go around and you know they might actually really be doing research but they just go out and units like that yeah and and i know that 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 was what what this guy said he said that his dad was like surprised you know that the cop was kind of um you know um like was aware of what he was talking about so kept asking more and more questions and then yeah and then the you know his mom was like just tell them just tell them the truth um, and then the cop was, did not seem surprised, um, you know, that he had heard things like that. So from that area. So, wow. I mean, um, that's like the person mm-hmm. with, you know, before we let you get going here with Linda Godfrey. I mean, when she was covering all this, I, the gentleman that he was, I believe, like part of town hall or something like that. He was in charge of like, you know, animal accounts and just animal Uh interactions around the neighborhood and stuff so when uh, linda godfrey went in to speak to him after one of the original witnesses had saw this after work the original witness went in to you know explain what she had seen and when she you know explained it to him this gentleman had literally a whole keep in mind this is the 80s so yeah a binder like a white manila yes 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 okay Uh and literally pulled it out and it was (laughs) stuff to the brim said werewolf and oh it literally gosh. fell into line as to what this woman was seeing and also when linda godfrey was covering it as well when she spoke to him and yeah so it's wow. super interesting right there in regards because obviously people are aware of it to an extent but i just mm-hmm. really think it's all i guess who's willing to acknowledge it because yeah. I mean, i'm assuming yeah. people within his department probably weren't very you know, impressed with the fact that he was willing to be so open about that, but. Mm -hmm. 
I it was I thought it was interesting that um, that the guy when the guy said because I said to him I said so you're telling me as it's running along that it is not only running but it's also going down he said yeah it was as if to like help it's like propel yes, it quadrupedal so we could keep that, yes that's the track and I was like of whoa how we have it run yes right there yeah. we don't whoa. think it just stays up by mm-hmm. people the whole time and the majority of the cases yes you know just picture. Like how a grizzly bear is kind of running, it can you know pushes itself up. So this thing will push itself up and use its momentum, and just like anything yeah. else. But at the end of the day, any animal that has the capability of, or a hominoid to be down on all fours, and mm-hmm. it's going to be like you know faster in regards of that, just because I mean, yeah, it's just how things work. Bears can walk upright, squirrels can walk upright, etc. But squirrels are much faster and bears and such on four legs than they are too i mean <laughs> the average yeah. human being yes. can't even run that fast so. <laughs> right 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 you know it was it was also where you said about like smiling like that looked like oh that's that so all the time. that is does it oh that's horrifying mm-hmm. oh this my woman gosh. up here in maine <gasps> was driving home and she said it was a beautiful night I can't remember the exact date on this but then all of a sudden she got like a cold shiver so she put her windows up and as she was driving, she saw this huge German Shepherd looking thing just literally pressing its face up against her oh driver's side gosh. window, just looking to seemingly be smiling at her. Oh, God. So, yeah, it's pretty gnarly oh, stuff. Well that, I mean, yeah, that's the, the German Shepherd thing, too, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, he said that was the most case. similar, but not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, then you have another case where a guy's outside and he hears – Sounds like his mom's bunny's getting destroyed and he comes mm-hmm. back in and he had come home to, like, you know, take care of her because she wasn't doing the best. And she hadn't really oh. informed him that some of her dogs had been missing. He just wondered what had yes. happened to them. And then she explained what was going on. And after she explained this, he, like I said, had stepped out to smoke a cigarette and still heard the commotion and then steps back in his mom's hysterical she claimed she saw this thing literally like tapping on the window as it was ripping the her rabbits apart. And he oh, goes out gosh. back when he finally gets the courage. And he said that the rabbit cage, they had pretty much made it animal proof as much as possible for local yeah. predators that couldn't have mm-hmm. got in there. But whatever this was, obviously wasn't local to the area. Wow. And had just straight up ripped the cage apart and yeah just shredded all the rabbits so wow and this is like like i said in almost all of them they seem to be smirking so yeah no messed up stuff for sure gosh wow what do you where what are, where are you at with um because i feel like when we first started working together you were more of the opinion that this was just you know that it was kind of like a maybe something that should have been you know that have gone extinct but what do you, i mean are you still kind of there or have you kind of changed your ideology about that what would you say Oof, tough question right there eh? <laughs> yeah and sorry <laughs> no you i always yeah. ask those hard hey, no i don't <laughs> i always preach that people got to answer the tough ones right and to be quite honest with you i still feel that there's definitely a prehistoric involvement meaning those animals are definitely still kicking around people have let spotted hyenas go baboons yeah all that still is interplaying for sure misidentification unfortunately crazy gnarly people some people that might not even be purposely trying to be crazy that are just having psychotic breaks Mm -hmm. and thinking that they're seeing things that aren't i was just watching a crime show the other day this dude was thinking he was seeing all these things that never happened, literally, yeah. you know, telling stories about how he had been in this involved in this. And they would look for the police reports, et cetera. Nothing ever occurred. But in his yeah. mind, this all did occur. Then we have hoaxers. OK, but now once let's kick that all off the table right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got like a lot of still mysterious stuff. You know, the, the sign of Cephali, the original encounters of the Michigan dog, man, the 1865 uh-huh. encounters up here. So, yeah, there's definitely some more involvement outside of everything I just mentioned for sure. And do I know what it is? No. Do I believe that this thing is just walking around on two feet all the time? No. Do I believe it's quadrupedal, bipedal? Yes. And if I did have to, since you ask, make a statement, I do now feel like yeah, as bizarre as it sounds that the dog man is real outside of everything we just stated i mean i don't know how 11 lumberjacks see the same thing and just are so Mm -hmm. scared that they leave 
And, right, right, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? So yes, yeah. And, you know, and but I have to say, I'm the same thing with you know with my field of you know interest with with Bigfoot with Sasquatch because I'm just left with more questions all the time. The more and more that I, you know, that I discover them, the more that I interact, kind of interact, you know, I, I'm just left with more questions. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. So no, that's yeah. excellent. Well, I do appreciate you popping in tonight, but that's a great thing with all the questions too, though, is because the more you're able to answer, there's always more questions. So it, it's a really great perspective and learning is something that all of us should achieve to do. And sometimes I think we're afraid of the truth on things meaning again before i let you go i saw something really awesome that held a ton of merit about with microbacterias and things that when meteorites had hit earth which we know meteorites have hit in earth for since the beginning of time mm -hmm. that they had microbacterias and things that ended up basically causing the beginning of life here on earth because they were able to adapt it because of the climate change, you know, that had been presented to them. Yeah. And then with small amounts of radiation and things, these things grew. So something like that, people wow. don't want to even take the second to actually understand it. But the way these scientists were explaining it, it literally makes so much sense because you have so many other planets that don't have life at the moment. And, we wouldn't have had just life either it's and they knew at the beginning certain things couldn't have survived but then all of a sudden micro bacterias were able to start surviving and it's really mm -hmm. interesting so yes it is it, that is very it, interesting it, yeah so basically like mm -hmm. i just said at the end of the day just everyone should always want to learn and you don't have to subscribe to everything but when mm -hmm. something does have a lot of clarity and you know clearance to it and proper data just sit back and think about it and don't be so afraid of stepping outside of the box of the norm. And yeah, so again, thanks for stopping in tonight and hanging out with us, Barb, because you always bring My the pleasure. heat. And I do look forward to Thank more collaborations you. for sure. Yep, definitely. Thank you for everyone who once again stopped by tonight for this episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. If you do enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share it. Feed the algorithm, and we will catch you on the next one.